Hello there, my name is Ismaus and today we're going to be looking at how to make a burning flag in Blender 2.8. So let me play back this for you. Uh, this is what we're going to be looking at. Uh, you can see the, the flag is waving and uh, then it decimates uh, as a result of the fire. You can see it's pretty detailed, you can see. And it disappears as it catches on fire. You can also see it here. I didn't render out this because it takes a lot of time to render this so i'm just using the viewport here but uh yeah and uh, if you look at the material here set up just a bit slower yeah until you can see it disappearing as well in the material surface there so let's look at let's talk about how i did this and uh yeah so the first thing i did is assimilate a cloth with it, which is basically a, a physics object a cloth physics object and uh uh, the settings I use are very basic. I mostly use the, the I didn't touch the default settings. You can see they're still the default settings. The only thing I touched is, uh, is uh, the shape. I gave this shape a pin group so that this sticks in the air so that it doesn't just fall down to gravity. And uh, to do that, I, set, I selected this edge and uh, assigned it to this vertex group and then use that as a pinning group so that uh, this flag stays intact. And uh, then I added some wind uh, to have this waving, and I think I added some turbulence as well, but uh, it wasn't that much. Uh, yeah, you will have to increase the wind uh, to a significant strength uh, for it to act onto the uh, the surface, otherwise we won't see it happening. Uh, so then from there, you can see how the way I made this flag to disappear. As you can see, when this is playing, uh, the flag starts to disappear. Yes, play this back and see it starts off as a full object. Actually, I have to. Uh, sometimes the dynamic paint doesn't update if you have the object hidden. So let me first unhide it. You can see how it's eating away. Uh, the flame is eating away on the flag, and uh, the flames are emitted exactly in that position like you would expect in real life. So let me show you how I set that up. So to do that, uh, let me just show you how to set. You, you start with a, any surface, any mesh, maybe with a few subdivisions. We're going to use dynamic painting uh, to have the fire eat up, eat that surface. So you get an object, like let me turn on random colors here and maybe turn on, uh, what is it called? Turn on uh, shortcuts as well. So, if you animate this coming closer, uh, coming closer uh, to the mesh, and something like uh, uh, this, something like this, and uh, you give this object a dynamic paint, a type canvas, and change uh, the surface to wait and uh, make sure you turn on the vertex group here and then give this a dynamic paint of type brush but uh, make sure that uh, the paint is set to mesh volume and proximity now if you give this if you go to wait mode you can see that uh, when this moves closer it creates this uh, weight paint gradient uh, for the vertices and uh, you can use that when weight paint as a mask to mask out or to hide uh, some of the faces so if i add in a mask modifier here and uh, just select the vertex group we have created from the weight paint i can see that uh, okay now it's doing the opposite so we will need to flip this around you can see what's happening so if you have more subdivisions here, uh, more subdivisions, uh, the effect looks even much smoother. So that's what I did here. So I have this flag and you can see it has a, a dynamic paint of types of, of uh, canvas, uh, the vertex weight, all the same things we have set up here. And uh, it has a mask and uh, this is the uh, the object, the dynamic object uh, that is uh, painting that vertex weight, sorry, weight 
our paint at, at mask uh, the surface. So as it comes closer, uh, this disappears, starts to disappear, the flag dis disappears. So that's how you made, I made the flag to disappear. And then to emit the smoke where the, the flag is being burnt. So I duplicated this flag twice. Let me just show you if I can find, I think it's this here. Okay, I think I need to show it under this uh, here. Uh, let's see, let's see what's going on. Oh, I think I need to first uh, remove the big catcher, delete the catcher here so that. Uh, I can see what's going on. Yeah, so what I did is uh, I duplicated this flag here and uh, because it has the same settings, it waves in the same way as it's being acted on, on with the same forces with this in the same environment. So it's waving in the same way as uh, this flag, that's the original flag. So you can see, let me just show you without are the mask here so this is the mask so you can see it's the same flag in the same position so it's behaving in the same way as the original and what i did i also gave it the same uh dynamic paint settings so when this object here comes closer to it 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 paints that way it paint let me see if i can show that to you so if i hide this isolate this you can see let me first turn off some of these settings here yeah you can see it's it has the same uh weight paint but uh because i just wanted only to show a portion of the flag what i did uh just uh let me show you i don't know if i use the mask like that, like in the same original version, I would have smoke being emitted all over this area, this blue area, the rest of this, which I didn't, I didn't want. I wanted only uh, this part here where the fire would normally be. So what I did is I used this modifier called uh, weight, vertex weight edit. And what it does is uh, if you have a vertex group, let me first turn off this mask like this, you can edit it. Um, so I have a few settings. Let me just recreate the, the entire vertex group. So if you if you have a vertex group like this, you can edit it by using the vertex weight edit. Uh, you select the vertex weight and start playing with a few settings. So this is I. I'm not really sure how this works, but I just experimented with a few settings and I achieved what I wanted so uh, now uh, because I only wanted this area here uh, this greenish uh, area I added some weight uh, to this side and uh, so that this only this stays and uh, then I changed the fall off from linear to constant giving me only this blue area because this if I then add a mask so let me just remove this so this is the same exact thing out here so now if i add a mask and use that vertex weight it is masking out all the other the rest of the parts but that area so now you can see what we have and because the flag deforms in the same way as uh, the original flag is taking in the same the vertices are in the same position so then i added a particle system to this let me just show you that display yeah, let's use circles then i added a vertex uh sorry a, a particle system to that uh mesh must mesh and uh, made sure that uh, let's see the settings i use here so i changed only uh, the number of particles and uh, then also make sure you use modifier stack otherwise it won't work 
as you want it. So if you don't use modify stack, modifier stack, it will emit where the faces are. But uh, if you use this, it will emit only in areas where the mask is. And then from there, I, didn't, I want to see what other settings I use here. It was actually basically that. And I re reduced the vertex, the gravity, because I didn't want these particles to fall as they are supposed to be small particles. And uh, because I have this wind object, wind uh, here, uh, that is um, making the, the flag wave. Uh, for some reason, the flag will only wave if you have a really high wind strength. Uh, but uh, because of that high wind strength, it will make the the particles go f really fast. It will blow the particles way, way faster than you expect. So I also made sure that uh, I remove that wind influence uh, from influencing the particles. So the particles just go up uh, normally. I also gave them a very short uh, life lifetime, so over about five frames uh, like that. And uh, then from there, uh, I just get this um, a fluid system of type of flow and uh, fire and smoke. Uh, basically, most of the settings are the default settings. Uh, the flow source is a particle system. Again, if you want to watch uh, the time lapse, the entire process from start to finish, you can watch it on my second channel, Blender Money. And uh, if you want to examine the project, you can go to my Patreon page and uh, look at that. Uh, the settings here are very basic, uh, initial velocity, and then we go to the domain, uh, which is using nearly basic, nearly default settings. So I changed only the resolution, uh, turned on uh, bottom collision, adaptive domain, and uh, I think that's it uh, for the smoke on fire. And what else, what else, what else? Yeah, so yeah, that's it for the smoke. Now, for the material, uh, if you look at this asset here, just the flag, you can see it disappear slowly. Maybe let me render this view here for you so, so that you can see. So if we go to it, I need to first change. I need to create a new folder here for, for my previews. So view render animation you can see it's also using the same system as uh, the masked uh, flag so i'm also using this object uh, instead of painting um instead of painting weight weight paint i'm painting vertex paint uh, which i'm using as an attribute in the in the materials and then let me I'll just just wait for it maybe I'm not planning to edit this, so you will have to bear with me on this. I'm not going to pause this to record, re record this. It takes too much time. So let's give it a few seconds as it, uh, it shouldn't take too long. I actually should have reduced the resolution to about 25%, so that is faster. Now you can see as this object moves in, as this object moves in, uh, uh, the flags, uh, the flag starts to get eaten more and more until it disappears completely. You can see it's not a smooth uh, transition. You can see some bits of fire flakes and uh, yeah. If you wanted to improve this, you can even add another particle system just to add flakes of dust. I don't know, cloth particles, just uh, let me end that there. Now let's look at this. So you can see how the fire is behaving there. Uh, so the way I set that up is that uh, I have this flag again. And for it, if you look at uh, the materials, again, you can just get this project on my Patreon page if you want to examine the, the material, the setup, or the node setup I used. So this 
And if you go to the dynamic paint, you can see we have two uh, different surfaces. We have surface one and then surface two uh, is what's powering this uh, material. So for surface two, we have the settings I use are vertex. Format is set to vertex and uh, the surface type is set this time to paint instead of white because we want to get vertex paint. Uh, then you make sure that uh, you have outputs uh, for the paint map and weight, and, uh, weight map. Uh, then you can access this data through your materials using the input attribute node and uh, then you just ah, actually not that it's not that it should be under input vertex colors and you can see a list of vertex colors you have access to and uh, these are the same vertex colors we have added here so this is it here if you preview this you can see we have the same gradient transition like that and uh, then I can you can use that to make whatever you want so I just mixed a few things here uh, to get uh, that so I used uh, a noise map here uh, to generate some fire elements so I colorized it with a color ramp you can see the, tra the time lapse and just to see how I did set up this thing and then I use this gradient here to mask out uh, those flames uh, so that they appear only where the, the fire is and uh, mix that with uh, let's see what's going on here yeah so this is the alpha map because you can see our mask is creating that jagged edges that i didn't want so i use an alpha mask uh, from the vertex paint we created uh, to create this alpha mask which creates a smoother yeah transition like that so it doesn't look like uh, we're just using cutting out masking out faces and uh, you don't even have to do this for the for the final flag you don't even have to have this mask uh, because in the final render if you're using this mask it will just cut out everything As you can see but uh, I just I also wanted to, to preview what I, what I was doing here so that's why you see me having it there let's see yeah it's uh, this second mask is there for preview purposes doesn't really do much because I can use uh, the alpha mask here to just cut off those areas that are being burnt then yeah everything is, else is just mixing and uh, just to get the colors the materials the fire material to look right you can again watch the time lapse to see how how i do that but uh, basically that's it i think let me just play for you the animation one more time so that you can see how it looks yeah so you have the fire and then the transition and then the fire dissipates yeah so this piece here uh, because this object is not wasn't large enough to encapsulate uh, to create a, a vertex weight a weight map enough to encapsulate the entire flag that's what's happening so you would have to increase this uh, to a larger size so that uh, the mask goes all the way uh, to cover this area but uh, basically that's it you can see even in uh, frame by frame you can see how it behaves like a flag burning. Anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, the time lapse is going to be available to the second channel, so thank you for watching.